Yes, one, two, three. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is John Chen from VFX Forge. Um, I've had a few requests to do a demo tutorial on the scene where Cerebus is uh, busting through the hedges. Involves this particular scene. I'll play for you guys now so you know what I'm talking about. I just talk over it. So we've got Cerebus, the main character here. He's uh, an aardvark. Been working on this project for a little while. Anyway, the brief was to have him burst through a hedge with leaves flying. And later on we decided that uh, it'll look good with uh, some vines trying to grab onto him as well as he climbs, uh, jumps through. So here's the play glass. Um, turned out pretty good, I think. The uh, technique I used was using uh, old school Maya particles and N Dynamics N cloth M mesh for the vines. Uh, this one is a view render with viewport 2.0. So anyway, let's uh, take a look at the Maya scene itself. So if I already got it open up, I'll just give you a quick overview of uh, what's in the scene itself. So of course we've got the main character Cerebus. Uh, he's being set as a collision object in uh, dynamics, particle dynamics. I'm not going to go through a tutorial on step by step on how to do this. Um, I'll just give you a quick overview on the techniques I use to set it up. Um, so we've also got a floor plane, uh, which is also acting as a collider. I've used a, a separate uh, floor collider, which I've hidden somehow. Uh, can't be bothered looking through it. Anyway, here's the scene itself. The geometry. So here's a layout. It's supposed to be the courtyard of a wizard, and the Cerebus is bursting through to uh, engage or kill the wizard. Uh, yeah. Before he does, though, he does meet a shadow beast, which is another dy dynamic scene that I've uh, been working on. So that's a. Uh, Layout Geo. We'll just turn the floor back on. And we've also got the high res Geo of the hedge. Now, this particular scene, uh, Geo here isn't dynamic, it's just basically to surround the dynamics which, we're gonna sh which I'm going to show you now. So, I'll just turn on dynamics. And we'll select the particles. Okay, so what I've done, bring up the particles here. So basically, I've emitted a bunch of particles in a volume. Um, the trick to doing this is to make sure when you emit the particles. You have, uh, let's see, where is it? You have the conserve turned way down. What am I looking at? It's over here. So when you when you emit the particles and you set it as a uh, initial state, so basically when you rewind the animation, it doesn't emit straight away it just emits in this volume but you want to turn off conserve when you set the initial state otherwise when you hit play and run the simulation your particles are going to follow uh, follow the emitter basically in that direction so we don't want that we want it to stay static so 
the emitter is this one. So it's just a very simple volume emitter. Uh, nothing special about this at all. And the particles. So as I said, make sure you set conserve to zero when you emit. Um, if you're finding that it's too uniform, you can break it up with a, a volume axis field, uh, which I've actually deleted here. Yeah. So when you first uh, emit it, you can make sure it's a bit more randomized using that, and then set your initial state. Uh, anyway, let's uh, have a look at what happens. So we've got Cerberus crashing through. And he's basically just bumping all the uh, particles out from here. Now to control the way that the particle behaves, I've used a bunch of fields. So we've got the gravity field, which is this one here turbulence field, a wind which is a volume axis and importantly a drag field as well. So using these it's uh, all trial and error. Basically you start off with the gravity because everything has gravity. Get it to a way that you like it and then move on to refining that. Now I've used a volume exclusion in the gravity volume exclusion so basically why I did that is I don't want the particles to be moving at the start but I don't want the particles to be affected by the gravity um, at the at the beginning right we only want it to fall as uh, as it basically gets uh, pushed up from from the hedges so the volume occlusion exclusion will uh, help you do that and it basically says you know any particles within this volume won't be affected by the gravity and I've done that for the other ones as well so it's quite important if you don't want the particles to be moving around at the beginning uh, so yeah basically you tweak these the drag field is another important one as well uh, because Cerberus is kind of running in slow motion here we don't want the grab we don't want basically the particles to fall to the ground in a you know in a normal kind of boom like fast sort of way Find it to sort of look like it's drifting, and because we're going to be parenting, uh, instancing leaves, so these these particles will uh, eventually become leaves, and leaves sort of uh, behave differently to to spheres, so they sort of float to the ground. So you got to uh, <coughs> keep that in mind as well. So as it is at the moment, the drag field is. Uh, yeah, is making the particles move slowly as they fall to the ground, which is useful. And the turbulence and wind just basically give it variation and velocity. Uh, otherwise, you'll find that when you do the instancing, uh, your your leaves are all going to point the same way. Basically, they're not going to look uh, look nice the way that we have it, uh, the way that I have it here in the final. So as you can see, leaves are sp each individual leaf is spinning. We've got each leaf parented to each of the particles as well. So depending on how many, uh, you know, leaves you want in the same, is uh, how many particles you should be working with. So I don't have that many here. So the simulation was actually fairly light on system resources. Okay, so let's move on 
to the next thing. Okay, so let's talk about instancing. So once you have the particle reacting uh, simulated the way you know you kind of like it, uh, we want to replace these particle spheres with uh, with the leaves. So instancing can be quite tricky. There are lots of resources online uh, that will uh, help you with it. It does require a little bit of uh, expression knowledge, but uh, I have no expression knowledge by the way, so most of what I've used here I've found out on the net. Uh, so there's always people out there that are smarter than you that can help you basically. Uh, so let's have a look at the instance object. Okay, so for the leaves, we've bas I've basically just got two types of leaves that we're gonna randomly uh, use as instances uh, they're pretty much the same, just different texture and a bit of different shape when you model these instances uh, make sure you don't use too high poly otherwise yeah you know you realize each particle is gonna have one of these so you might end up with quite a few polygons keep it basic um, one note is when you when you're modeling, uh, make sure you set the pivot point uh, to the the, uh, the aim axis, basically. Uh, so, as you can see, my pivot point is you know where the leaf is coming up from, basically. And you want it to set it a little bit in inward from so inward from the geometry. So don't don't have it like right on the edge. Have it a little bit inside. Um, that way you have a little bit of uh, intersecting going on uh, which just makes it look a little bit more realistic uh, and yeah basically the particles aren't floating in there, the leaves aren't just floating in there. Uh, so that's the instance geometry and here's the instancer itself it's uh, nothing nothing tricky here uh, basically I've selected the two leaves added it to a instance which is particle instance of replacement add them in cycle you want to set to sequential and later on I'll show you um, how to uh, randomize these using expressions oh and yeah when you're modeling the uh, instance geometry make sure it's it's always a good habit to have them at world space uh, zero 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 as well just avoids any problems okay all right let's zoom out here and zoom back into the scene so I'm going to turn the instancer on and you'll see basically each leaf is being parented to each particle where the leaf is starting is uh, the aim of the the pivot of it is in the center of center of the particle basically <laughs> so that's what you want um, otherwise yeah it's gonna uh, not look good so having that pivot point in the center of your instance geometry and uh, not the center the the end uh, makes a difference okay so yeah in your particles you go into instance uh, you have the ability to choose uh, the instance node you created. General options, position, will position, scale, scale rand is just an expression that I write which basically when these particles are created you'll notice that each one has a random size so when you Im when you first set up the particles uh, you want to tell it to have a random scale so that's what that is, that's in the creation expression when 
you uh, before you uh, emit the particles and set the initial state. Uh, because I've already set the initial state, the expression is no longer here. So sorry, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, I should have mentioned that first. Anyway. Uh, Go back here. So scale random, that's fine. Posi world position, um, rotation, t rotation. This is the important and the tricky one here. The rotation PP. Um, basically, we want the instance leaves to have the same rotation, rotational properties as the particle. So. I In the per particle instances, we added the rotation PP and we've added an instance, ah, sorry, a expression here. And basically, that expression is rotation per particle equals rotation per particle plus the velocity per particle. Uh, sorry, the velocity of the scene times point two. So the point two is a scale, is a uh, a user input. Uh, basically, it just reduces the effect. Uh, if you have it to one, it's gonna yeah be f flying around over the place. So we want to times it by two. And the velocity is basically. The velocity affecting each of the particles from the fields. So, as Cerberus comes through, it's pushing the particles out, and then these fields are affecting the particles, which all all add to the velocity, right? And why I have this one here is. Um, Basically, I had a creation expression as well that uh, randomized the the rotation of each particle when they were born, uh, and then I set that as an initial state. Um, yeah, that that and the scale uh, you need to do that before uh, before you cache the scene and set the set the initial state. If you don't do that, uh, each frame it's going to execute the execute the expression, which is no good. So let's have a look. So you can see here each leaf, right? Each leaf is rotating differently, right? Um, that's what we want. We don't want each leaf to be pointing in the same direction. So when you're first making this, yeah, you'll probably find that that's going to happen. So only way to get around that is when you set the initial state, you need to randomize it. See, that's quite nice there twisting around. Now stay 4 because I have a floor collision object there. Yeah, stuck to the ground. Uh, the collision object itself, if we go to the geo connector, it's got a pretty high friction and a very low resilience. So that's basically making it very sticky. So there's no bounce. Basically we don't want the leaves to bounce back up. As they hit the ground, because that's not how leaves, you know, behave. <laughs> uh, okay, now I'll just run through that again. And of course, the model itself has also got a geo connector, uh, and this one has a low friction and a negative resilience. So basically, we want to make sure that the particles don't, the leaves don't stick 
don't stick to uh, Cerebus as he's running through. Right. He's just basically pushing all the particles away. Uh, I think that's about it for the instancer. Uh, let's so let's move on to the vines in the next.